Hey everyone, my name is Whitney and this is my YouTube channel Wit Makes where I share all the things I make. And today I have a little podcast episode where I'm going to show finished objects, works in progress, plans, and then if I have time, a little life stuff at the end. I'm going to start with knitting today because I'm wearing one of my finished objects. So I will share knitting and then I have sewing and I will put in in the description box the time if you want to skip to sewing. I'll try and do a chapter. This is, I don't need to explain, but my browser is too old <laughs> and it won't update because my computer is too old to be able to do it on the YouTube website. But I think I figured out if I open up Chrome that I can do that stuff. So I'll try and do the little chapters, okay? All right, I got 30 minutes before I go and get Sam. It's a busy week, guys. It's a busy time of my life. I have a Dr. Pepper. And I'll try not to drink on it too much. Um, I feel like in these podcasts, everyone has their like <laughs> delicious tea, which I love tea, in a ceramic mug. And listen, today I have a Dr. Pepper. It's one of my favorite things. It's a little treat for a busy week today. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to save this. I have, I have a lot to show you today. So let's start with the socks. I feel like they're the least exciting. I, referring to how busy things are, last week was one of the busiest weeks of my family's life. <laughs> We just had stuff every single night or multiple things. And that's not usually how, like late and for just all kinds of stuff. But I really made it a point the past two weeks to finish. I wanted things off my needles and I'm really proud of myself because I did it. So I finished these socks. As you can see, this one doesn't quite fit. It looks better this way. This one doesn't quite fit this blocker, but these are, they're still kind of damp before I take them off. These are the totally rad ribbed socks from Summerlee Design. And I used this, can you see, uh, yarn from the Shop La Mercery sock set. Here we go. The sock subscription that I'm a part of. So this was January's. And then I used pretty much all of the dark brown. So this is what I have left. And I was originally making these for my son and I made them too small <laughs> because his feet, I can't make him socks. I can't make him socks until he's like 20 because I, his feet used to be my size. So these are my size. They have the 64 stitch, just like a medium. I'm just cracking up at this heel on this blocker. Uh, the 64 stitch count. Um, they are a little short in the foot because I did my first afterthought heel. So I did the peasant heel is the, is the version that was in this pattern. And I just miss, I just didn't measure correctly, but they do fit my daughter. They just fit my feet and they might fit a little better after blocking them. So Summerlee Design Co., Totally rad ripped socks. I love this pattern. There are quite a few modifications you can do. I did the ribbed cuff. You can see I need to join my stripes better, but I don't really care, especially on the sock, but I should, I should get in the habit of doing that, of perfecting that technique. Um, or you can do a tabbed cuff. You can do stripes or no stripes, but uh, it just it has this nice ribbing and then the foot. And I really liked the toe and heel construction. I'm just trying out, this is the year that I'm going to become a proficient sock knitter and I learn something every time. So it was fun to do a different sock technique, learned um, to measure a bit better <laughs> and enjoyed that one because you do ribbing and then you do stripes and then you do ribbing and so you're kind of always changing it up so I feel like they went pretty fast I knit the second one just last week so that's pretty fast for me to knit a sock in a week next up I think I'm going to do the bear paw socks by Andrea Mowry for my mom just make her just a cozy pair of socks and give them to her uh maybe for Mother's Day maybe for Easter I don't know she is like me she likes 
just some cozy socks to wear around the house. And I wear mine a lot, so I think I'm gonna make those are my next pair of socks. Okay, that's finished object number one. I'm trying not to be too frantic here. Finished object number two is the Sophie shawl. All right, so I did not enjoy knitting this. This is the Sophie shawl, which is a scarf. I don't understand. <laughs> I know the Sophie scarf is the little one, but this puppy, how have I been wearing it? Just kind of like this. I love, love this color. This is a knit crate yarn. I have a little bit of it yet. I'm left. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. I made a hat. I made my beanie and then I have this. Um, I kind of wish I'd used both skeins to make like a lento or something because this color is fabulous. But Anyway, I hated knitting this. I love the finished object. I even like it. I kind of have even tucked these up. Like the other day it was really cold. So I just kind of wore it like a big cowl and just kind of did this. Um, if you've knit the Sophie scarf, I think it's the same thing, but a different repeat rate. And I'm embarrassed to show you, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard a couple people mention that this one was tricky for them to keep track of what round they were on, what row they're on and when to repeat. Yes. I don't know why it was not mindless knitting because I would sit down and be like, have I done four or done five? Like I would just forget. And no, I didn't use a row counter, but you should with this project, but you think you don't need to because it's so simple. But <laughs> obviously at some point, I, this shape is not correct uh, <laughs> if you look at pictures of this uh, scarf, but I think I started to in decrease on the wrong side because I was on the wrong row, whatever. It doesn't matter when it's wrapped around your neck. So I'm letting it go. I don't care. And I'm really, really happy with this. And it's unlike any scarf that I have. I don't wear a ton of scarves, but I do wear them. And I might wear this one even more. Like I can see pulling this out in the winter. Like today is dreary and gray and foggy. And this little pop of color is, it makes me so happy. So I'm very excited about this. But like I said, it was a slot. Like I forced myself to finish this. And I don't think I did the full, I forget what my stitch count. I was worried I'd run out of yarn. And I had about this much left from a skein. Um, so I think I went to 60 stitches, which was kind of between the medium and the large, and then started my decreases just based on the weight that I had left. But it's fine. Love it. So really, really happy with this. Not a process in it for me. But you know, I would make this again. <laughs> If I had time and a beautiful yarn, this would be an excellent gift. I was able to get the largest one almost out of one skein um, and it's really useful. So there you go, the Sophie shawl. I liked it, hated it, but love it. <laughs> All right, and then my next finished object, yeah, I got another one this baby whipped up in a week and I probably could have done it faster if last week had been so busy but I have quite a bit I bought this for another project and then ended up scrapping it of wool in the game crazy sexy wool in lilac powder that's a good picture color um I love this color love it and just bulky yarn. I, I bought this when I last year when I just started knitting. I knit a sweater out of this type of yarn and I rarely wear it. It's not my favorite to wear. Uh, I might like a cardigan in it, whatever. It doesn't matter. I was trying to figure out what to do with this and now I still have two and this one left. So I made the Wooly Tops Triangle Scarf by Kadri Patterns. I think this might be free on her website. I bought it off Ravelry, but on her Instagram, when she debuted it or whatever, 
she says it's free on her website. It's a very simple scarf, but I love it. Now I haven't blocked it, so please ignore, it's going to even out and this edge will look better, but I wanted to show it to you dry because I love it. Now, I did the little tassel things and I'm just gonna take these off because I don't like them. But I wanted to show you how I did it. But I wore this because it is still cold here. I did the Andrea Mallory way and how she has it in her picture. And I wore it like this. And I got my big hair, my big scarf with my coat on Saturday. And it's so warm. <laughs> like this is not a every day. This is when it is cold out. Um, it's so warm and I love the color because it is March and it looks like January outside. And this gives me a little spring joy. So I'm so happy to have this for spring because I will wear this. And when I take off the tassels, I could even see myself wearing this like around the house, like just wrapping up in it. I'm so excited about it. And it's a very simple pattern. It's worked in stockinette, so you do have to do purl stitches because it's knit flat, but I don't mind that, but it feels like some people mind that. And then it has this really nice edging that she does that I think makes good use of the bulky yarn. I think this is really pretty. Love it. And I did enjoy, I enjoy knitting bulky yarn. I like the big chunky needles, um, especially coming from this sweater that I just finished which was on smaller needles and having my hands work in a different way. Feels good, yeah, I whipped this puppy out. So I might just make another one out of what I have left. Now I had all my balls of yarn all, cause I had started a project and then I frogged it. So I had like four, I don't know how many skeins they actually were. So I need to measure this and see, or I'm sorry, weigh it and see how much yarn it actually took and what, what I can get out of what I have. So there's my woolly scarf. I wasn't that excited about it and then I finished it and I was like, I love this. And I love how squishy it is. Fantastic, love. So finished object number three. I can count, three. <laughs> All right, and then finally, my big finished project is what I'm wearing today, and it is the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit. Now, I think that is a good representation of how it fits. I am very happy with this. I did make some mistakes. I have some learning successes. I have some laddering on the collar, but the fit, is fantastic. I um, have mohair now all on my nose. I like how it's a little looser. My lento, which is my other top down raglan that I just made, is much more fitted. And I think I like the fit of this more. Now, I'm debating on if I made another one. I'm sorry that it's kind of wrinkled. I've been in a coat and in a meeting all day. I might want to lengthen it. I'm wearing pretty high-waisted jeans. I might want to lengthen it a little more and I might lengthen the arms a little more. However, this is a great, like if I had a sweatshirt, I would really love this length. So then I'm like, I think I like this. Also, I've been doing this all day, pushing him up. So I made the size small on the needles recommended, didn't modify a thing and just, are you tired of me saying, I think I need to lengthen things. I got long arms, I'm a tall girl. I might need to lengthen a little more, but this does, I mean, the fit is fantastic. And I think it's pretty true to how it is supposed to be. I just, um, in looking at it, like I love how it fits in my shoulders and the ease here that I might like one even a little bit longer. So, just some thoughts. I don't know if I'll make this again, just because there's a million patterns out there <laughs> that are so great. But I will say, I know people get tired of everyone knitting petite knit. Her patterns just work. And yes, they are basic, simple, but I do think they're very well thought out. And having, 
if you've ever tried to knit something that wasn't well written or thought out, even if it was simple, you appreciate her patterns a little more. This yarn is, let me get the, I do have a lot of yarn left, which I'm kind of annoyed about, but that's all right. I, I use the Madeline Tosh Merino Light Copper in the color Horn. This is a 90% superwash merino wool, 8% acrylic, and 2% 2% Stellina. It has a little copper flex. This is beautiful. And I held it with the Rowan Kid Silk Haze, which is 70% mohair and 30% silk. This is so this is the softest sweater ever. And the fabric that it made is so, I'm so sorry for my wrinkles, uh, is so beautiful. I knew this was a basic pattern and I wanted a more neutral, like everyday sweater. And I just love that the flex just make it a little special, but it's definitely one I can see myself wearing this all the time and it won't be like, oh my God, she's wearing the bright green sweater again, which I don't care. I don't see anybody, but you know what I mean? Like it's one I can keep reaching for and it is so cozy and I love it. So this is my first time working with Superwash. I do think holding it with the mohair silk, uh, it just feels scrumptious and I'm very happy with it. So that is my first sweater of the year. I feel like I'm really rushing, but I think that's all I wanna say about this. Let me know if you have any questions. This is a sweater you can find all over the place. Lots of people have made it. And I'm going to be entering it into the bougie sweatshirt knit along that Casey from Young Folk Knit. And someone, is someone else hosting that with her? I can't remember, but I, this is my bougie sweatshirt and it is, it's a gray sweatshirt, but then it's like not gray. It goes a little deeper. So I was really excited when I took this off my needles and I made notes of, I just had a little laddering with the short row shaping. I will say the Linto, having made them back to back, I could kind of compare them. I do like that double, that folded collar. It feels a little more substantial. This feels a little flimsier to me. And I know some people feel the exact opposite. They prefer this. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, the no frill sweatshirt, sweater, <laughs> I see why it is so popular. All right, coming up next on my needles, I've only, I started yesterday. I am going to make the coffee run collar by Samantha Guerin. And this is also a knit along with Casey of Young Folk Knit. And I just love the, I'm really craving some texture. And I thought this would be fun in a smaller project to work on. So it is just the front and then this is the back. And so you wear it like with a coat or whatever. It looks like you have a big old sweater on. But I loved the idea of this for spring here when I still would want the warmth, but not have a bulky sweater and a coat and maybe like even be able to wear it with a blazer or something. So I had two balls of this Woolberry, this is her Sockberry yarn. I bought this last year to hold with this uh, mohair from Knitting for Olive for a different project. I didn't like where that was going, but then I realized I have enough for this collar and I wanted to try it and I wanted to try some texture and have a bit of a smaller project. So um, just because it doesn't have a back or sleeves, right? So I'm working on the back hem with the ribbing and am loving it. So I do, I love the color. So it's that purpley color. It's nice and fuzzy with the mohair. I think that will be fun to work on for the next couple of weeks. So that is my current work in progress. And then I will probably cast on the bear paw socks fairly soon. And then I have swatched, let me get my project bag. And someone asked about my project bag last time and I made it myself. 
and I don't have a pattern. I just made it up. <laughs> so here's another one. I actually really love this. It's a great sweater's quantity. So maybe someday I will take measurements. I love this one because I did the drawstring on top. And I did a pocket in there, I think. So this is fabric I got at Joanne. I just kind of whipped them together, but maybe I should share that in case you sew and want to make that. So a few months ago, everyone was talking about the Santa's Garn spring catalog and trying to get a hold of it. I don't really care about the patterns. I mean, it's annoying that you can't get them without the catalog. <laughs> whatever but i was obsessed with the green sweater on front i didn't even care what the sweater was just the green so i bought myself some i believe this is jelly bean is what it's called jelly bean green and this is the pure gint so it's 100 percent wool and i bought a sweaters quantity i had to buy it from two different stores to get enough and i'm going to make well first i made a swatch like a good girl so i need to check my swatch gauge i just took this off the blocking mat with my socks and i think this is going to be the it's not a sweatshirt from knitting for olive this happy green sweatshirt simple stockinette is kind of all i want to wear for spring so that will be i'm doing the collar with the texture uh, you know, we'll kind of have fun with that. I'll do the ribbed socks. And then this is going to be just a nice, easy make that I think will be really, really nice. So that is what I have coming up. And yeah, for March, the green, all of that. I actually love the green and like the purple together. Very excited to start this one. So I think I would like, I'm going to put this aside work on my collar, and then maybe next week, cast this puppy on. Uh, we are going on a road trip for spring break, so this might be a good car project, maybe. All right, that is my knitting. Take a little sip of Dr. Pepper, and then I have a lot of sewing to show you too. Can I do it in 10 minutes? Let's see, all right. Let me start with a half finished. And I don't have pictures in this because um, I'm not done with it yet. <laughs> so when the new McCall's release came, or the early spring or whatever they're calling it, guys, I fell in love with these. <laughs> this is M8368. I love the little bra top, but I am kind of obsessed with these pants. And I just love this so i bought this pattern and then i found this knit at joanne that's in their athleisure wear section so they have it wasn't with the rib knits and the knits it's in the athleisure wear and it has i forget what the percentage is but it has a lot of spandex in it but it feels fantastic and i liked this color so i bought enough to make me something i thought i bought enough to make my daughter something as well but i kind of didn't think with the flared legs. These take up a little more fabric than just leggings. So I made the pants and I'm obsessed. I love them. I made them a bit too big, so I need to adjust. So there's some, there's some error here, but I think I'm going to get more fabric and make a black pair. Uh, I'm, we're going to conjure this somehow. So I'm still working on this, but love these pants and have been wearing them around the house. Um, like I wore them Sunday cause we were hanging out at home, but you know, it's the leisure wear, like you're comfy, but I could definitely put on sneakers and maybe like even a cute zip up or something and go out of the house. So very happy with the pants, the top. I don't even want to, I've butchered this so much. It was way too big. I made the size medium in the pants. I might be able to go down to a small, uh, but my bust is 32 inches and I made a medium. So yeah, even looking at this, I guess I was just cutting out mediums and I just kept going. I've got to size down and then I tried to fix it and it, it's a hot mess. So this is a disaster. I do think I'm going to try it again. I will say 
there's a facing in the front of this. Now, I'm not working out in bell bottoms, so this wasn't really like a workout outfit, but I did think that both of these tops would be cute with leggings and to work out with, right? Am I wrong? Especially this one. But this one has this facing, and I'm just not sure how I feel about that. So I might try and go get some more of this fabric and either make the other top, which feels a little more practical. Like I'm not wearing this out, okay? I mean, I could, it's fine. But I, I w was thinking like leisure wear, kind of an outfit, but, um, so I'm more in love with the pants and I'm happy that they fit. And but I would like to figure out the little top so I could have a little set. So fail, win, but I'm going to keep working on it. So stay tuned. Maybe next time I will have something in that vein. All right. Now my two finished objects. Let's do <laughs> the one I have negative feelings for, and then I'll put on the other one, and then we'll be good. So I can wear that to go pick up some. All right, these are the Carolyn pajamas from Closet Core Patterns, and I did take some pictures in them. I made the version with all the piping. I made my own piping. I did the pants and the shirt. All right. Talk about hating it while you're working on it. This was a slog and a half. Um, this beautiful fabric is from Art Gallery and it's a flannel that I picked up from StyleMaker and it's gorgeous. I got the bias tape from StyleMaker and then I had the cording to make the piping. Um, I feel like from a distance, this looks great. The fit is pretty great. I made a size like I haven't been great about the sizing. I made a size telling you, I mean, um, eight, no alterations. And it fits pretty well. I would say it fits really well. Um, I went online. So I shared on Instagram that I was hating making this. And I got quite a few DMs from people saying they thought the instructions for this collar were horrible. And guys, I kind of agree. So if you look at this one, this is a hot mess. This, I tried to follow what they were saying. This side, it's not that much neater. It's, well, it's not that much better, but it's a lot neater. This side, I just did it the way that I have done a lapel in the past and it's a lot better. So I'm a little bummed about that, but it's pajamas. So I'm letting it go and I just finished it, but I did not enjoy making these, but I do like them. I think I will like them more as I wear them. I think I will wear the pants a lot. I don't know how much I will wear the flannel shirt. I like, I would never sleep in this. It'd be way too hot, but you know, we have house guests quite a bit and it's nice to have like a nice covered full pajama set that you can wear around them uh, when people are here. So I, I will get wear out of it. It's still really cold here. So I plan on wearing this for the rest of the spring. It makes me very happy to look at. I do think this is one, you guys know, I usually hate things right when I'm finished with them. <laughs> And that's how I feel about this, but I think I will will feel better. But yeah, I was just kind of bummed because there are so many details to this. And I didn't think it was explained very well on how to finish them. But then, you know, I look on Instagram and there are so many cute versions and people that love this pattern that I was like, maybe it's me. But when I got all those DMs, I was like, I bet those people that it turned out perfectly, did not follow the instructions and constructed their shirt this, the way they wanted to. Here are the pants, they're pretty simple. I did add, I love a thick elastic. So I made my elastic, um, I forget what it calls for, but I used the big, it's not one and a half, is it? Well, it might be, it might even be two inches. It's at least one and a half. 
wide elastic. This is just comfier for me. Um, but I do think it looks a little bit bunchier <laughs> up here than others that I've seen. And these cuffs are real cute. So and you do a little faux fly. There you go. You can see. So I enjoyed making the pants was a breeze. But then I got to the shirt and I was like, oh my goodness. So mixed feelings on these. Glad they're done. Don't really foresee myself making them again. All right. Speaking of making again, I'm going to change for you right quick. Oh, I did want to say this sweater, I just have this tank top on underneath, obviously, but I just wore it all morning. Um, it's very warm. I did get warm in our meeting that I was in, but uh, it feels great against skin. I didn't have any issues. I do feel like it is so sheddy. It's so fluffy that um, it's kind of all over the place. All right, so this I whipped up yesterday and I love it. This is the Verity Top by Style Arc. I have made one of these before. It's a sweatshirt, but it's drop shoulder, which I like, and it has this giant cowl, or giant turtleneck, I guess, not a cowl. Here is the pattern. Now you see they put in a little cord and I, on both of my versions, have left that out. I feel like it's less sporty looking this way. And I like that. Um, it's not, the first time I did it was a little bit of laziness, but this time I did just want this to be a turtleneck sweatshirt. This fabric is from Minerva and it's just there sweatshirt please I will have links I don't say this but I will link to everything below for the knitting I just linked to my Ravelry pro projects page because I have everything there but for my sewing I try and put so it's nice and warm it's really beautiful this color is part of my winter capsule color palette and this is like a real legit turtleneck now obviously you can turn it under but I kind of like it just like that I mentioned it's still cold here so <laughs> this um I plan on just wearing probably like this with jeans I did add a cuff to the arms I thought it kind of matched with this pattern you do this hem facing which I really like it's just a little detail that I think um yeah it makes it not just a sweatshirt and it, it feels more like a sweater to me, if that makes sense. I got a sweater that's a sweatshirt. I got a sweatshirt that's a sweater. But I thought it kind of went with the vibe of the cuff on the neck and finished that nicely. Otherwise, you're just supposed to hem it. I think on my last version, I just hemmed it. So that is my finished object. I made the size, whew, I don't know if I wrote it down. I think it's the size eight. I went off my bust measurement for this one. And I made it before, so I didn't even think about it and just cut it out again. So that, we did it in 30 minutes. That's what I've been making. I've been busy. Coming up, I have two fabrics to show you. This color again. Like how, do you love this or do you think this is too much? I am making my tried and true Vogue pants out of this. Like I'm leaving this out, we're cutting this out today. A pair of flowy wide leg trousers, I cannot wait. And this will be my final make for my winter capsule. And then I get into what you'll see next week. I'm going to start working on some UFOs that I'd like to get finished up. So that will be happening. So I'm going to make these pants and start working on the UFOs. I also, well, I'll show this fabric when I, never mind. I did buy some fabric, but I'll show you when I get to it. But yeah, this and the UFOs is coming up. And then I'm going to have, I'm looking at my little calendar, that I'm going to have my winter capsule roundup. So I didn't really do, I guess I did my plans, but I'm going to go through piece by piece. We'll start with what I made. 
than what I bought and what I had. And I'm going to be honest and be like, I didn't wear this. This is crap. This is great. Um, and we're going to go through and see how everything worked in my winter capsule. Then before I start spring, because I got some time here, <laughs> I am going to go through and everything left over from all my winter capsule projects. I am going to use that fabric in some way and I kind of want to show you what I have planned for that and how I'm going to achieve that. So that, those are my next few weeks coming up and then I'll be back. We'll start April with another podcast and I'm sorry if I talked really fast, but we got it in. I'm going to split and go get Sam from school and, um, but I think I mentioned everything. I did start up my blog again. So it's WhitneyRHolly.com. And I am trying to put pattern reviews as I make them for people that like reading blogs and for my own reference. Because one thing I love about Ravelry is having all, like I used to like go to my project page. So that when I am wearing something that's older and you have questions about it, I have an easy link for it. I'm also doing outfit rounds roundups on Fridays showing how I wear my clothes. So most of it's handmade, but there's a lot that's not like showing, um, yeah, showing how I wear my clothes. So if you're interested in that, um, that's WhitneyRHolly.com. I'll have the link below. And I think you can subscribe so you can get it in your inbox. But every Friday I have the outfit roundups and I'm just trying to kind of catch up. I was starting with my winter capsule with all of the things that I've made for pattern reviews. And then my hope is when I have an outfit pick, I can be like, that's my no frills sweater and you can click on it and link it. So in the future, if I'm wearing that and you want to know more about it, it's really easy on the blog as well. I've always wanted to catalog my makes in blog form somehow and this I think is how I'm going to do it. I also am cooking out of one cookbook for the month of March so I am documenting that every Monday. I won't do that every month but I've been doing that and I did want to share some things I've been reading. So for TV we're just watching The Last of Us. I am loving this guys and I'm not a big like zombie <laughs> show person but I think this show is pretty incredible and I have loved it so I think I'm one episode behind which I don't know is the last episode or if there's two more but we're watching Last of Us and lots and lots of basketball my son is now fully obsessed with basketball so we watch all the college all the NBA if you have any questions or you need me on your trivia team <laughs> I would be great. Um, that's why I've gotten so much knitting done probably because we watch a lot of basketball. So that's what we're watching. And then I think Succession starts back later this month. And I'm really excited about that. We've also been watching season three of The Dairy Girls. Cannot recommend this show enough. It is hilarious. Turn on the subtitles. Um, season three is as good as the first two seasons. So we'll probably finish Last of Us finish Dairy Girls, and then I'm all in with Succession. I get about one night a week of TV watching, so I do one show at a time. And I watch pretty much everything with Chris, so, which is fine. And then reading, I wanted to share, I've listened to two good books. And I, again, have been putting it on while I'm knitting and driving. Uh, the first one is The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. Tom Hanks narrates it, and it was a delight to listen to. I, it's not, it's kind of one of those books where like nothing, I don't want to say nothing happens because it's a whole life of this brother and sister. So plenty happens, but I loved it. It was absolutely beautifully written, beautifully narrated and really enjoyed it. And then I started listening to everyone in my family has killed someone. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the author, but the audio version of this book is hilarious. It is a murder mystery, but like with a little bit of a wink to it. And I am flying through it. I've been sewing to it, knitting to it. It's been really enjoyable to listen to. So those are my book recommendations for you. Okay, I really, I gotta go get Sam. I hope that you have a great week and that you get some creative time in. 
let me know if I went too fast and forgot something really important. I will be happy to link or tell you in the comments. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week where we're going to look in the box of UFOs. Until then, happy sewing.